Alrighty, today we're going to do a rear disc brake installation. It's actually a pretty simple. I've put together all the pieces to the kit. Most of the Jeep parts suppliers want to charge five to six hundred bucks for this. I've got it down to 250 bucks, so I'd say we're doing alright. For a complete rear disc conversion, these are the same exact parts that you'll need for a front disc conversion. Same thing, front and rear axle. So what you got here are uh, two brand new rotors. Now I will put all the part numbers of these in the video description and I'll show them at the end of the video uh, alongside picture of all the parts. So these rotors are off a 1977-ish uh, Jeep CJ7. Now you gotta be careful, they made two different size rotors for CJ7s. So one is 7 8 inch, the other one is inch and eighth. You want inch and eighth, the thickest one that you can get. So, on this rotor, uh, you'll see I've got a brand new hub pressed in already with brand new lug studs. The problem is with the uh, old hubs is that uh, they're really easy to crack and to warp. A, when you're pulling them off. B, when you're trying to push the studs out. So, I went ahead and I bought brand new hubs. And uh, I'm so glad I did it. Then you got caliper brackets. The brake calipers themselves. Now these are uh, organic brake pads, aka known as the cheapest ones that you can buy. So you're going to buy organic pads for a reason. A, the Jeep weighs half as much as the uh, Chevy half ton trucks that these come off of, and it goes half as fast, aka meaning you're not going to get enough heat in this braking system for it to work at optimal uh, temperatures when you're running a ceramic pad or a metallic, so that's why you want to go organic. Yes, they can wear out faster. But I mean, how many miles are you putting on your Jeep? A couple thousand every 10 years. No big deal. Now, if you are running a stock wheel, you must have a wheel spacer. This is because the drums are so big that they take the entire inside of the wheel. And our wheels don't have much offset. They're basically, they go right over the caliper. So, go a one inch spacer because uh, it's a small spacer you can get where they give you an additional set of lug studs on it. You can go maybe a half inch, now, I haven't tried it, but the problem is if you get just a giant shim, then you have to have longer wheel studs, and it just complicates things. These are super easy. However, if you're going with an aftermarket wheel that has a lot better backspacing, you don't need these at all. These are the calipers. Now, these calipers are the same on all four corners of my Jeep. These are the front calipers. And then uh, to connect them to my brake lines, I've got the stock Chevy uh, front brake lines here. The calipers come with the banjo bolt. You connect them into there. And these basically have the same uh, small brake line fitting. I believe it's a 3 8 that uh, all the Jeep uses. So they go right into the end of this. It works out really nice. So there's our general parts section. So the first things first, you want to remove your wheel. Obviously you want to jack it up. Put jack stands underneath it so it can't fall on you. And the first step is to remove the wheel. Now, I've already got my dust cap removed because I've already had this apart. So this is about how your hub should look after you take your wheel off. Now I've already taken my dust cap off. What you do with the screwdriver, you just pry behind it and it pops off. And uh, I was using the wrong hub puller, which is why this is slotted to get the teeth inside of there. Uh, but the next step is to, oh well, that broke. So the big hub right here is an inch and seven sixteenth socket. So I've got that ready to go. Loosened it, like I said, I've already had the side drum off the Jeep. So you just pop this off. And then there's a washer back here. You don't want to lose that washer. so. I just kind of stack things in the order that I took them off. So you've got that. So now we need to get the drum off. Most likely uh, your drums can be stuck on. Imagine you got two brake shoes inside this drum right now. Alright, so they're going to be adjusted out so that way you have your maximum braking capacity. What you want to do is slide them inwards so you can get the drum off. If they're stuck out, the drum can catch on it, it can warp and destroy everything. So come back here. You've got four adjustments, two on each side. So you got the set up top, which here's one, one on the other side, and then two at the bottom and the center. So what we're going to do is take a wrench, loosen up the jam nuts, and then you can take some vice grips and you can twist the bolts on the inside. 
So you twist a little bit, spin your drum. If it spins freely, you're probably good. But if it's really hard to push, that means that the shoe is contacting the drum. So you gotta adjust that shoe inwards. So now your brake drum's ready to go. You got your shoes adjusted in, got your end cap off, the wheels off, we're ready. So you notice here that mine has some grind marks on three slots here. That's because I was using too small of a hub puller, trying to pull that thing off and it just wasn't working right. And the problem is that it grabbed behind the hub and actually warped it where it pulled it. So what I've done is I bought the official Kaiser Willys hub puller. These are expensive, but it looks like it's really heavy duty and it should do the trick well. So they've got a whole video on how to use this. It's very simple. You basically just take the feet, you put it over uh, some of the bolts here, and you tighten this on. They said leave a little bit of slack, you know, eighth to quarter inch, because you don't want this thing to be super tight, that way it can't wobble like this. Now if you're like me and you just bought a brand new hub puller, you do need to grease this for the first time you use it and keep it greased because that thing's going to be under a lot of pressure and you don't want it to get stuck and pull threads a little bit so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to make a big mess. So grease that. Twist that thing in there. Alrighty, now I got the hub puller on. Like I said, I've already taken this apart. I did it in the back room, then I brought it up here um, to work on another day. So, ideally, you'd get it in, then you'd twist this. It would be on the center of that bolt, and then you twist it till it comes off. Now, mine's already been taken off, so it's very easy. I'm sure you could take this off and run an impact if you wanted on it. Probably not advised, but it's something I would do, so. Now, if you're running an impact, just remember that these things can pop and fall to the floor. So, if I was going to run the impact, I'd run it, I'd stand away from the Jeep, hold my arm like this, and then it'd pop onto the floor. Maybe leave some carpet down here. Okay, this is my passenger side. This side is for real. I have not taken this hub off yet. I struggled with the other style hub puller. Bought this one, so now we're going to give it a shot. So, I'll try it using their fancy uh, tool first. I think you just smack this with a hammer. Um, if that doesn't work, I will throw an impact on it. But, uh, put your Jeep in gear as well to keep that from spinning. Parking brake on, in gear. Alright, we'll give her a shot. Alright, this is obviously not the proper way to do it, but we got an inch and eighth socket. We're going to put on the impact here. This is not an impact socket, but what are you going to do? Alright, so we're going to put that on there, like so. I have a plastic face shield on, and when I do this, it should fall on the cardboard, and I'm going to stand to the side so that way it doesn't come at me, because I mean, it's not going to shoot out that bad, but you always just want to take precautions, so we'll give this a shot. Awful for an off-road vehicle, especially one that goes into mud. You look in here when I turn this. That is all mud inside of there. It gets chunked up. See? And it uh, ruins the pads as it spins around. And when there's a ton of mud in there, the brakes kind of stop working. And uh, the only way to wash them out is to pull all this crap off, wash it, put it all back together. That sucks. Whereas the disc is sort of self-cleaning as it's all exposed. So that is why we don't want drum brakes. Now that you got your hub off, now my situation was a little special. I actually had to cut the thing in half because it physically would not come out. And uh, this thing's been stuck on the Jeep for a few years and it's just been so miserable that I haven't messed with it, but uh, if you do have to cut it, cut a big area out so you can get your grinder head in there, and then cut along the keyway 
area so that way if you cut through too far like I did you cut into the key and not into the axle shaft itself. So first thing you want to do is pull your brake line out then you need to get the backing hub off super easy just 9 16 bolts six of them you gotta put a wrench on one side and impact on the other and then remove that whole assembly. The hard part is over. Got the backing plate off, so all the old junk is out. Now what you're found with is just kind of the bare end of the axle. So what you want to do is clean up the shaft really nice. Make sure there's no rust sitting on there, or else it'll be hard to pull on and off like that one was. Um, you do not want to lose this back shim right here. These are uh, for stacking your axle. Now these are all set uh, properly by the factory when the Jeeps were new. And uh, some Jeeps might have a couple small ones. Maybe this one's just one big one. You have a mixture of both. Just uh, make sure you do not lose these and you put them back in the same location. While you're here, wouldn't be a bad idea to replace these bearings that are right here. All you gotta do is just yank the axle shaft out now and then press this off and press on a new one. I'm gonna show you just how quick it is to throw these things on the Jeep. So you've already got your drum taken off. You've got this all cleaned up. I've got uh, some bolts just setting in here holding everything together. I had uh, quite a few shims in mine actually. Um, so I put those all back just how they were. So now we're going to install everything uh, as we should. So I'm grabbing a caliper bracket. Okay, there's the hub assembly all the way on. We got the rotor pressed in to the new hub. Hub slid on with the key inside. Now we need to do the brake caliper setup itself. So inside, you got your caliper. Got a brake pad here. Now inside of some of the brake pad kits, you're gonna get a little spring like this. This is vital for keeping the brake pad in here. Uh, when you're trying to put it together, if you know the spring is just gonna slap around and fall around on you. So you take, uh, this spring would sit inside like that. So you want to snap this on. So there it's on. So now we're going to just put that in towards the caliper. And there we go. So that's going to hold that. So. When you go to put the thing on, you're holding it upside down, that pad's not going to fall out. So, now, what we need to do, you've got these, you've got these little guys right here. These go inside the caliper, they just kind of press into here gently, like that. Now these, you got to remember, as the brake caliper wears, these pins are sliding in and out as the caliper squeezes together over time. So you want to grease these. Uh, if not, they can get seized. Which, yes, it's actually true. My buddy has spent hours trying to unseize a brake caliper before. So I've got white lithium grease on here. That should do her pretty good. So there's one. Get the other one going. They do sell this at uh, AutoZone. Uh, it's right on the counter when you're buying brake parts. Usually they try to get you to buy a packet or so for 30 cents or whatever. So, 
there is that. So now this is ready to go on. Remember, the leader side always goes up here. So I'm gonna set this in. The brake caliper will mount behind the caliper bracket, just like so. Everything appears to be fitting together well. We've already got our spacers inside the caliper, so we just need to thread these in. You will need to do that with a wrench. Here's your brake line. So, when it's time for this, there's a fitting on the uh, inside of this caliper here. You do not want to take this brake line and set it on top of the axle like this because it will get smashed to the top of the frame. You want to put it either behind the axle here or in front. You'll see the stock brake line goes around and sits in front of the axle. So Most people probably don't have a brake flaring tool, so just get a smaller line from AutoZone. Remove the line from the uh, center of the axle here. Just remove that, put a smaller line, maybe end it uh, somewhere over here. And then make sure that your brake line isn't dangling off the outside. So, very simple process to do. Just a side note, if you have caliper pads and when you're putting them on they're dirty, get some brake clean, clean those things off. The rotor itself is filthy and greasy from when I bought it. I haven't really messed with it since, so what we're gonna do is uh, just clean this thing off because if we leave the grease on it, it's gonna get in the pads and it's not gonna be good, so. Normally you would, uh, now's the time you take this and you would paint it. But uh, I'm going to do that later. I'm just doing this for video demonstration purposes. So now we're going to put on our one inch wheel spacer because we're running stock wheels. So put that on. Have 20 lug studs here. So the Willys manual says you can torque these 60 to 75 foot pounds. Since these are new studs, I want to make sure they're getting pulled in all the way. So I'm going to go to uh, 75 foot pound. Same thing on the outside, we're going to go 60 to 75 foot pound, again brand new wheel spacers, we're going to go straight to 75 foot pound. And there you have it, the wheels all the way assembled, you got some wicked looking disc brakes back here, way cooler than the drums right there. These are beefy. Now if you want to get crazy and you want this gap here, I'm sure you can make a spacer that uh, cleans up the inside of this lip and it's just a circle plate of steel like a giant washer that would go in here. Um, the wheels do stick out just a hair just a little bit but now my suspension is partially flexed right this night now so the back end's sticking out a bit but not too bad at all. Remember I've got 750 by 16 tires so mine are a little bit larger anyways width and height wise if you're running 650s, 700s, you're not going to be sticking out uh, as far as this. So, overall, pretty cool. We got one last trick up our sleeve here. So, you got your new calipers on, your rotors are on, you're ready to go. You've already got your brake lines hooked up and you're ready to bleed. Well, typically, what comes on the caliper is just a normal bleeder. And you know how it goes when you're bleeding brakes. You have one guy pumping on the pedal, then the other guy's back here cracking it open, shutting it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to do a lot of research and brake bleeding before you continue. Now these are a cool thing, they're called speed bleeders, you can buy them online, made by Russell. And uh, I looked up the thread size for these calipers, and I bought the right ones that fit. These are part number 639580, which they're 10 millimeter by 1.5 thread. So what these do is they have a check valve inside of them. So it will let air out of the caliper, but it won't let it suck back in. And the camera won't show up, but there's just a little tiny pinhole in there. 
So what you do is you install them on your Jeep, you tighten them all the way up, all four wheels. Then you go back and you loosen one of them just a bit. Then you pump the pedal slowly, it shoves the brake fluid out. But when you let off the pedal, it doesn't suck air back into this. The check valve prevents that. So you can just slowly pump the pedal, bleed out that caliper, then you close it. Then you go to the other caliper, crack it open, do the same thing. You can bleed your brakes all by yourself. Now since these calipers are a reman, uh, sometimes that you might get one that the bleeder thread here is a different size, which has happened to me. All you got to do is figure out what the thread size is, go to Russell's website, figure out what the speed bleeder part number is for that thread size, and then buy that one. They come in packs of two, so you would theoretically just buy two of these part numbers, but again, you might get a goofy one like I did on my front, so just be aware of that. On the front axle, you gotta do the same thing as the uh, rear. You gotta make sure that your shoes are adjusted inwards. So that's your first step. Your second step is to come over here. Doesn't matter if you have locking hubs or dry flanges. Pull these outer bolts out, slide the hub off. And then you're gonna have spindle nuts on the inside of the big hub. Pull both spindle nuts out. And then you should be able to take the whole hub and just slide it out. Then after you've got that out, you're basically the same with the face of the same thing we had back here. Where you've got to pull the six bolts holding this on, yank it out, and then uh, you're just ready to start this assembly. So it's not too hard. It's cost saving. 